Hey, welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. So today we're going to be talking about DeepMind's AI crushing pro StarCraft players. And secondly, we're going to be talking about AMD's new Radeon 7 GPU having Linux support. So let's go ahead and start off with this DeepMind AI. Now, just recently, Google's DeepMind AI actually beat out some of the best StarCraft players in the world. And it beat out two pro StarCraft players in a crushing defeat of 5-0. to zero. Now, that might not sound like anything for people who is not familiar, but with a game like StarCraft, which is a real-time strategy game, the amount of intelligence that would take an AI to actually beat out a human and the, some of the best players in the world is pretty incredible. So this has been something that has been worked on for a long time, ever since IBM Blue, which I think was the first real mainstream AI to beat out a human player. At that time, it was chess, and then later on, it was Go. But real-time strategy games are on another level, specifically something like StarCraft or maybe League of Legends. And so this was actually something that Google has been working on for a while, and specifically with their AlphaStar system, which is a deep neural network. And so here's some example of how powerful this AI is. And so the Alpha Star League, which is the, you know, the AI league, ran for 14 days. And what it did was it gained up to 200 years of real-time StarCraft experience. And it was able to do this by getting um, anonymized data uh, from Blizzard. So basically people playing these games and then it sends out that anonymous data. And that, that was taken by Alpha Star, the AI. And now it learned all this stuff. And the thing is, uh, people might feel weird about this, but if you remember, you know, uh, on everything that you sign up with, uh, a game or you sign up on the internet, it always asks for this anonymous data. And that's where it got that from. And so anytime that you think about, you know, playing your games or whatever it is, and you agree to give them anonymous data, these are one of the things that it is used for. And so DeepMind AI, they do have a long history uh, because this company actually elevated itself from going from something as I would say simple now as a chess and then something more complicated to shogi and go and now to real-time strategy games but this isn't where this AI is really going to you know serve the public and most importantly uh, serve businesses and governments it's really because of everything else that it's able to do so if you go to DeepMind's website this is now a Google company or Alphabet company, but originally this company was started by uh, this person right here, Dr. Demis Hassabis. Uh, I think it's out of the UK. And in 2014, uh, Google or Alphabet bought them out. And so this is something that is really fascinating uh, because obviously you start with mainstream stuff first, you know, with a uh, games like this, with StarCraft, it'll get a lot of press. But what companies, businesses, and governments are really looking for is, okay, the complexity that it took to do something like this, how can we apply it to other areas, uh, scientific areas, uh, health areas, uh, business areas, government areas. This could do a whole bunch of things. And I know on the flip side, everybody who's going to be thinking about AI, you know, there's definitely the dark side. Because the example that, you know, I talked about earlier, it learning 200 years worth of data of human knowledge in 14 days that's really scary you know and that's something that I don't think ever is going to go away and you know anybody who's really interested in sci-fi or whatever is always going to be thinking about whenever these things become sentient you know whenever these things can think for its own and humans will not be able to catch up so that's always the dark side but I'm always interested in the very positive things that this will allow us to do uh, it helps us solve some really complex problems, you know, solve things such as cancer, which AI has been doing for a long time, trying to figure those things out. And other things like maybe how to produce clean water, produce more food for people, help people with learning disabilities. There's many great things that this thing can do. You know, it'll allow us to basically have more time. Uh, if you think about all your digital devices, if you think about all the conveniences that you have nowadays, it's through technology. And it's more increasingly through AI. And so just imagine not having those technologies. Uh, I, th I don't think a lot of people think about how convenient their lives are. Okay, so uh, those are my thoughts on DeepMind AI. Pretty crazy, and it's only going to get more crazy. So let's go ahead and continue the quote-unquote gaming news with AMD Radeon 7. So this makes me happy. So in the recent CES, AMD released 
or announced their brand new Radeon 7 graphics card to compete against Intel's RTX 2080. And if I'm not mistaken, this is gonna be the first seven nanometer graphics card. And just the specs alone, it's gonna be pretty, pretty crazy. So this is built around the Vega 20 GPU, has a clock speed up to 1800 megahertz. It's 14% faster than the Vega 64. And the RAM itself, video RAM is up to 16 gigs of HBM2 memory. So that's really fast memory. And this is gonna be insane. You know, um, I'm not a gamer. Uh, in terms of a modern gamer but i know this thing is gonna make a lot of gamers happy and the pricing in the u.s is going to be around 699 dollars it will be released february 7th and it comes with devil may cry resident evil 2 and division 2. that's really great that they packed all the three games in but the most amazing thing to me i'm really impressed by this is amd is providing linux support day one uh, which is so awesome and this is something I think a lot of people in the Linux community have been waiting for a long time. And it seems to me every day it's getting better. You know, for me, it was really first starting with Wine. Uh, that's where my first experience was with uh, Linux gaming, at least playing Windows games. And then later on, I think the best thing that happened was with Valve and Steam, uh, providing people uh, the ability to play some Linux games in Steam. And then later on with Proton, then they can play some Windows games through Linux so that was really awesome and now we have more and more of these GPU companies really taking Linux support serious and the great thing is AMD and Nvidia they have been providing Linux support you can get Linux drivers you know natively for your Linux machine but it's always felt like it's like second class you know either they don't provide the drivers right away which is usually the case or they don't provide you all the features that you would get in Windows. But in this case, AMD is really stepping up and I have to applaud that for them. And it's not just the fact that they wanna do this just for Linux gamers per se, it's because more people are using Linux desktop now and also Linux, uh, the Linux kernel is embedded in so many things. So it makes business sense for AMD to really get in there early, support this demographic, because obviously it's going to make them money and all their partners money as well. But regardless of how it came about, I don't care. I'm super happy about this. I myself am probably not going to get this. But whenever it gets down to price that is you know, good for me and I upgrade my current AMD uh, card, which is a RX 470, this is going to be a huge bonus for me. And at the same time, I, I feel really good because I know that it has native Linux support right away. And so those are my thoughts on the news this week. If you had any thoughts on either AMD's Linux support for the brand new Radeon 7 graphics card or this crazy deep mining AI, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you'll get access to 30 videos plus additional content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.